It's a profession that's been made popular by a hit TV show, Dog the Bounty Hunter. You remember, right? Well, the industry has evolved over the last 20 years, but it's still a fairly small one. Kaylee Kirby spent some time with a bondsman who's done some work in our area. You can open up, we can have a conversation, we can search, or I'm going to knock this door down. Which one? Franklin Frazier has been a bondsman for the last 14 years. I went to school for nursing. Um, and I was doing football also, and I realized that football wasn't going to take off. So I started looking into being a marshal. It was a hiring freeze at the time, so I did a little bit more research and ended up stumbling upon bounty hunting. He says it intrigued him, and he felt like he was a natural at it. Yeah. Plus, he liked that it wasn't an office job. It's become a part of me. It's the, it's the drilling and um, I love being out dealing with people. I'm always constantly dealing with people. I'm you know, a people person. Um, I kind of work on your own time. It's just always on the go. I like being busy. Frazier also has a YouTube channel where he goes by Bounty Tank and has over half a million subscribers. He documents all of his hunts, showing what his job is like and how he works to help the people he's looking for. I'd be on the 800 block of Metcalf to possibly serve a warrant. Despite the slang term bounty hunting being popularized, the industry was only professionalized in 2001. Mary Smith with Smith Bonds and Surety in Rossford says now people have to have certain training and licenses. In fact, in Ohio, it's technically against the law to use the term bounty hunter. It's to not confuse people who come in and try to pretend like they're bounty hunters to go and knock on doors and, and it's trying to professionalize the industry and bring it to a more uh, respectful industry. These are people who are charged with a crime and paid their bond to stay out of jail. But when the time came to show up for court, they skipped out. Bail jumpers. I am going after people strictly that I have bonded out or other bondsmen. Um, that's it. We're not out here fighting crime. That's for the police. We strictly focus on people that are bonded out of jail. Bondsmen like Frazier are quick to admit they're not police officers, but they do deal with law enforcement on occasion. We don't often deal with them other than if they pick someone up in the middle of the night and need the person held in jail before they go to court. Because there is a warrant for the person's arrest, we can then house that person in the jail and take them to court the next day. Wood County Sheriff Mark Vosilishan says his deputies deal with the criminal side of retrieving people, what's commonly known as a warrant. Bondsmen are on the civil side because the contract between them is not through the courts, which also means they operate by a different set of rules. We can't just go into the person's home. We can knock on the door, we can ask, but we cannot search. Now, if we believe the person is in there and can articulate that, we would then go back to a court and get a search warrant. The sheriff also says his deputies have to stay within their jurisdiction, but bondsmen don't have boundaries when it comes to picking someone up and bringing them back. And Frazier is the perfect example. Mostly it's Akron, but I travel Cleveland, Canton, basically wherever they go, I go. I go out of town. Sometimes you know, I have to go out of state. There's also been a few times where that work has brought him to Northwest Ohio. So he's not here. These people attitudes, man, they're lying about something. He says sometimes it'll take him a few days to catch someone, and other times it takes weeks. And that's partly why this industry isn't as big as people might think. It's a very small industry on its own. There's very few bondsmen across the nation, maybe 10,000. Um, it, it's, a, it's a very um, high risk industry, so you better know what you're doing. This job is all about risk and reward, but that doesn't mean there's a lack of business. Crime never stops. So that can answer your question. Crime will never stop. So it's some it's job security. Um, but I mean, you can make a very good living at doing it. Both Frazier and Smith say, although they are catching people who skipped bail, they see their job as more than that. After I arrest some of these guys, I, off, I always offer them help, um, whether it's uh, financial or, or helping them build their brand. I, I tell them, hey, if you need something, you need help, contact me. And Frazier believes every person he catches is an opportunity to help them turn their life around. Reporting in Toledo, Kaylee Kirby, WTOL 11.
Super interesting stuff. And get this, Frazier says he really doesn't use violence whatsoever. He works instead to de-escalate situations and is usually able to track bail jumpers down using the Internet because people tend to post their lives online.